Hey everyone, Ms. Dempsey here. For this week's Daily Race C Guide, we'll be using two different cars. For the time trial, we'll be using the Renault RS01. And for the race, we'll be using the Subaru WRX. In the time trial, the Renault RS01 is really fast. It has really good turning, but it's pretty unstable. In the race, it has poor tire wear, which makes it not as viable. Your first braking point is just before you reach the three board that is on the right. You want to be braking hard for a while and slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in. Carefully get on the throttle so the rear doesn't step out. Your next braking point is just as the gravel on the left starts. Quick burst of braking, get really close to the sausage curves and carefully accelerate. Then turn in before you reach the one board. Use a little bit of braking if necessary, but for the most part, you're doing lots of throttle control. Bring yourself to the right and you want to brake in between the three and the two board. So brake right here, brake hard for a short moment and slowly transition over from the braking to the throttle. Try your best to not touch the sand over here. And for this next part, you want to start to use a little bit of braking as you're about to reach the two board. Take advantage of the apex without hitting the sausage curb and get on the throttle. Now here comes the pretty tricky part. Brake before you reach the three board on the right. Brake as much as you can in a straight line. And when you hit the apex, that is when you want to start to be a little easy on the throttle. Be super careful here because it is really easy for the Renault to want to spin out over here. Just carefully accelerate your way down the hill. Lots of throttle control as you go through this left turn. Then when you reach the two board, that is where you want to use some of your braking power. Just fine tune the car to make its way around this turn. Bring yourself towards the right and your final braking point is before you reach the three board. Brake hard for a short while, slowly ease off the brakes, and get the car pointing where you want to go before you start to fully accelerate. But that's pretty much it for this lap guide. Let's go ahead and take a look at the strategies. For this race, we are doing 13 laps at Laguna Seca with the group three cars. Fuel is a times two, so don't worry about the fuel. But the tire wear is a times 10, which means that tire wear is going to be pretty harsh. So you're probably not going to want to use the mid-engine rear-wheel drive cars, with two exceptions. But you pretty much don't want to use those cars as they are pretty bad on the tires, especially the rear tires. The exceptions to those rules are the Peugeot RZZ Group 3 and the Porsche 911 RSR. Those two cars are actually pretty good on the tires, so it is possible to do the race with them. But if you're using cars like the Audi R8 LMS, the Renault RS01, and the Lamborghini Huracan, you're going to have a pretty hard time because they have pretty bad tire wear, especially towards rear tires. Is it possible to get good results with them? Yes, but it's going to be harder. So once those rear tires start to wear out, then your car is going to be more likely to want to spin out. So if you've already done this race by the time you've watched this video, then you might have seen that there are people using cars like the Subaru WRX, the Lexus RCF, which is an interesting choice, and other front engine wheel drive cars because these cars, they're more stable and generally they're better on the tires. So especially the Subaru WRX, this car is actually one of the better cars for this week's Daily Race C, as this car is pretty stable. It's really good on the tires, so you can easily make seven laps on the racing medium tires. Speaking of tires, you have both the racing medium and hard tires provided to you, and both are required to be used, so you do have to make a one stop. So if you're starting this race on the racing medium tires, then you want to eventually put on over at the end of lap six to seven, depending on your driving style and car, to change on over to the racing hard tires. And it's pretty much the same story. If you're starting on the racing hard tires, lap six to seven, pit on over, 
change over to the racing medium tires. So whichever tires you're starting with, you're eventually going to pit halfway into the race to change over to the tires that you haven't used yet. And as your tires slowly start to wear out, or rather quickly start to wear out, you want to be a bit more careful about how you're driving the car, especially as you go through the corkscrew. So this corkscrew, it can be really easy to get the car upset and potentially spin out, which is what you're going to see right here. I get a little too aggressive with the car and with the worn tires, the car ended up hating me for that. So you want to be pretty careful about how you navigate the corkscrew, especially with worn tires. And I was going to pit this up anyways, and with the dirty tires, that gives me an extra reason to pit on over. So we used the racing medium tires at the start of the race, and we're going to switch on over to the racing hard tires. And once again, fuels at times too, so don't worry about refueling. And it's going to take a while to get to the pit stop because apparently these cars struggle to make a simple left turn to get into the pit box. And your pit loss is going to be around 24 seconds. So it is going to take a while to get the pits up done. But let's say you decide to pit by yourself and there's no one in front to you when you come into the pit stops and when you come out of the pit stops, there's no traffic ahead of you. Then you'll have all this clean air to be able to push your car to the limits. So you'll be able to get faster times. You won't get held up and you'll be able to make a bit of progress. And yeah, so you might see some people pit a bit early, try to get the undercut done solely because of that, because it's pretty difficult to get the overtake done. And speaking of overtakes, let's talk about where it's good to do it. So the main straight, which is where we just went through, that is one good place to get the overtake done, especially if you get a good exit out of the final turn. After that, this is a single file line until we reach the smaller back straight over here. There's also a penalty serving zone. So if someone in front of you is serving a penalty, then that can open up an opportunity to get an overtake done right over here. After that, this is more single file line stuff. Do not battle it out as you go through this quick left turn. And this part right here leading up to the corkscrew, very situational for overtakes. It's actually really dangerous to get the overtake done, but it is possible to get it done. This is a very situational place. So it's not a good place, but it is possible to get an overtake done there. After that, more single file line stuff until we reach the final turn. This part is going to be situational once again. So this part, you want to try to get the inside line. And if you're still battling it out through these turns, then you want to stay on the left to secure the inside line for the hairpin up ahead. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this guide. So not too much to talk about here. And you want to make sure that you do get a good qualifying time as it's pretty difficult to get an overtake done here. But that's all for me. I'm going to sign off now. So this is Mr. MCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.